bunking, which was perfect. A six and a half, I think six or six and a half inch. Always use your snake. Hey guys, welcome back. Today, one of the biggest, most significant, I think, upgrades that I've been waiting for is to change, uh, perfect my riding position. Pretty much is, I'll show you now. Pretty much, uh, look how I'm sitting now. I'm slightly slouched forward, and in longer rides, my upper shoulders, uh, this area hurts a little bit this is this would be my perfect position right here so so pretty much what i'm missing is two inches maybe two and a half inches this much higher and slightly pulled back slightly pulled back like that just like that so today i'm going to be installing risers i'm going to try to do it myself i wasn't sure if i can do it i'm going to try and tackle it it's going to take me some time it's the first time i'm doing it so when I was doing my research, which uh, risers, I was looking for uh, two, three inches higher when, uh, from what they currently have. It comes originally with a four inch rise. So that means I need anywhere between six, seven. I don't want it too high. And I needed the one and a half to two inch pullback. There was actually a very nice one by Thrash and Supply. That I looked and I've seen another ST with it and it's really nice the only problem it's really pricey and I don't like it was oh, oh, uh, up there in the 400 500 with uh, the top clamp and I don't think it's justified to pay that much for design again form and function so form was beautiful but uh, the price was too much so I researched research and finally found a uh, bunking I'll have a link down by the description where you can find it. Bunking, which was perfect, a six and a half, I think six or six and a half inch with a two inch pullback and it's one piece. So it's very rigid, not a lot of flex. So that's what I'm gonna be installing now. Now from the research I've done online, usually if you go with a higher rise, you need this whole extension kit for the cable clutch, for the brake line, the throttle. Uh, it's like a, a throttle by wire, so you need the electronic extension but when you go six and a half inch you can still actually use your original cabling so hopefully i won't have any surprises down the road highly recommend it is actually so you get more access to the triple tree is to take the fairing the whole fairing off outer and inner fairing a lot of work i'm going to try and avoid that and still avoid scratches on my fender and that whole area so wish me luck so first thing is I'm gonna start by removing the fuel tank. So remove the seat, remove the fuel tank so I get better and easier access over here to plugs. So in order to be able to get the bunking, let me show you the bunking, where, where is it? You see the lower, the lower uh, part of the clamp, the risers, I have to get the cabling through that, that opening and it does there's no disconnect from what i know there's no disconnect on the top so i'll have to disconnect it right here on the bottom and run the cable through it so in order to do that and have better access i need to take the fuel tank off show you there's two things you need to take out one is the the electrical wiring the power going to the this is the you see this that goes to the fuel pump there's the fuel pump inside the tank since it's uh, electronically fuel injected so that if you follow that cable you can see that's the plug right there and the clip is on the top so you need to disconnect that then we need to disconnect uh, the quick disconnect for the fuel 
And where is the vent? I need to find the vent. I'm not sure where the vent is. So that's the clip. You click that, you press that, and pull that out from here, right there. Next is gonna be uh, the quick release. We're gonna get a little bit of fuel on us. And I guess, yeah, this is the drain. This right here is the, the vent, venting, I think. Yeah. So let's take this, this up, I don't know how to do. I think, oh, I think you pull it up, push it up. Okay, yeah, this, you push it up, you hear a click and then pull this out. Now we're gonna uh, purge, purge, you know, like run the bike, let it uh, use up all the uh, fuel that's currently in the lines. So we dry it up and then we take the pipe, uh, we take the uh, fuel tank off. And this is the vent, there we go. So now let's start the engine. good enough now I'll take out the front the front bolt right here and then we'll remove the tank uh, they say it's better off to, to have a, a quarter tank full or whatever otherwise it's very heavy very carefully and gently I got the front bolt out obviously over here there's an Allen key and on the other side an open wrench like a wrench Slowly, slowly, I had the fuel tank covered so I don't bang it. And now it's off. Let's take the fuel tank off. And it's off. Make sure you put it somewhere where it's in direct sunlight so it heats up and you get a nice explosion over there. This is what the bike looks like from, you know, exposed. And the plugs we were looking for, the access to the plugs. Well, I think I just found all the, the cables that I was searching for. It's underneath, underneath this plastic, this rubber, I don't know, protective, protective housing. Once you get that out, you're exposed. You get exposure to all the cables that are uh, relevant. Well, I'm trying to figure out all the cabling over here. I don't quite see where where things need to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the handlebars off and the risers off, and then I get more flex on the cable so I can see what needs to be disconnected and what does not need to be disconnected. So handlebars off. See, the Harley stock risers are two-piece and the wires, the cabling goes in the middle. The bunking, I need to run the wires through here. That's why I need to uh, disconnect the other end of these wires and run it through this. Who told you that bubble wrap is only for moving and shipping? Leftovers, I see potential of scratching the interfering with the handlebars, so I'm gonna bubble wrap them and protect so it, they don't scratch the interfering. I got in with the uh, ratchet wrench from the bottom, three quarters, three quarter, I don't know, can you see? A three quarter ratchet right here. Obviously I uh, loosened it before I, before I took the, right, the handlebars off because it spins otherwise. One and then the other one. risers are off this upper clamp needs also to come off although it looks very very much alike what the other part that i'm just going to show you in a second it looks almost identical the actually the bolt the drilling of the bolts they don't they don't match so this upper clamp needs to go and you need to buy a harley part uh, i'll show you very soon where's that part uh, i'll put a link down by the description of that Harley part. It's pretty much, it looks the same, but it's slightly different. This is the part, it actually looks identical to this, but uh, it's not. It's slightly different, the drilling of the hole. So you need to get this part. 
I'm doing now is literally pulling one wire at a time and seeing where it, uh, you know, where it's pulling on the other side, exposing the connector and disconnecting it. I'm pulling these wires out one at a time, but what later on I'll need to run it through the hole, you know, it goes through here, then part of the frame and comes out over here. So I connect it to one of the wires, the first wire, a little uh, rope that it's gonna be my snake for later on to be able to get them all back in. So now I have that leading snake. This whole time I was really uh, going careful. I was afraid to pull this whole, this whole cluster out. You can gently pull it out, then you get access to all the ports, all the connectors. This is the one I just took out. There's one here. Again, I found it by pulling here and seeing where it ends at top. I'm gonna unclip it and mark it so I know where it goes. I have a total of three wires that I need to pull out. I'm gonna use three uh, separate snakes. Obviously you can use one and start playing around, but you know me, I'm lazy. I like to do, uh, think a little bit more and do a little bit less. So you can use three separate ones and then snake them back in one at a time. See, now all three cables are off. I can put, uh, literally put them through the risers and then uh, snake them back in. Put the risers back on. I am not changing uh, the bushings like, uh, you know, they sell a lot of different bushings, uh, more rigid. The original stock ones are uh, some kind of rubberized. This is rigid already. I don't think I need uh, bushings. I'm just gonna use this stock brand new. Okay, I placed the risers in. I hand tightened it, not too hard. And uh, now we're gonna run the wires. Yeah, oh, actually first, I'm gonna switch over, switch this to the proper one. Then I'm gonna run the handlebars, mount them over here, run the wires through, mount them initially, and then start working with stretching whatever's needed. And finally, the, the final tightening of the risers are gonna be last, once I have everything in position. I just swapped these two. I used the 15 uh, Torx screwdriver to take these four bolts, screws out, and swap it over to here. Now I have the right one. Part number down by the description. Now these wires through this opening. How about that one hand operation? Huh? They got it all mounted on gently and carefully. This is a bit tight, but it's still functional. The brake line is fine. Let's take all the covers off and then start, you know, adjusting it, uh, the fine tuning. That all wraps are off. I'm gonna off I'm gonna position this initially then wire back you know snake these back in connect them down here and then do uh finally tighten the risers properly night nice and tight good and tight Always use your snake. I'm finally tightening the riser bolt from the bottom to its uh, final torque spec, which is 32.467542 uh, centimeters of, uh, of gallon. And don't get me wrong, not that I'm making fun. I do believe that torque specs are important for certain things. Uh, this is what I'm doing right now, you see? 
from the bottom. I got in from here with a long ratchet wrench. The only thing that scares me now is all those little wires. It was pretty tight to get this boot back in and all those wires click. And at one point, actually one of them uh, disconnected. So I'm kind of worried that I'll get a message. I, I did start it, didn't get any message. So the next step is gonna be to put the, uh, yeah, put the tank, there you go, the tank back on, then the seat and then take it out to see if it starts and then to figure out the final positioning of uh, the handlebars and accordingly to play around with the brake levers, clutch lever and stuff like that. The tank, tank is back on again, front, front the bolt is in, slightly tightened, not at all. Gonna raise it and connect all the things that we disconnected before. The vent pipe, the fuel line, and the plug for the power for the fuel pump. Tank is on. I'll put the seat on. Right there. See this piece over here? Usually I have, usually I have this tour pack. This tour pack, an Advan Black tour pack. And speaking of tour, shit, the phone keeps falling. Speaking of tour packs, yeah, the raffle for the Advan Black tour pack is still going on. Head over to my website, www.holyshift.us. Grab up any uh, merch, piece of merch, sticker, hat, beautiful shirts. I got also these rosaries from Israel, from the Holy Land, a lot of items from the Holy Land. And every piece of merchandise that you buy gives you entry points into the raffle. The winner is going to be getting any any choice of tour pack you want, any color by Advan Black, and it's gonna be shipped to you worldwide. No matter where you are, you're gonna get it, the winner. Go ahead. Yeah, okay, anyway, where was I? This, currently, I just, I got that on Amazon. It's like a placeholder instead of uh, using my tour pack right now. Okay, let's take it out. Let's take the bike out. Okay, I've spent the last few minutes getting these, uh, getting the bars to the right position I want, higher, closer to me, lower, whatever. And accordingly, the levers, I like them, I like the levers to be not too low, not too high, I like them exactly in the middle, both sides, that's what I did. Now I'm gonna take the bike out and see if everything works. Okay guys, just started the bike, it's running fine. Uh, two, two things are important. I got an end check engine message. I didn't know, this was the first time that I actually, I'm actually disconnecting you know, uh, cables and wires uh, off the bike. So every time you disconnect the cable and you start the bike, immediately the computer detects it and it tells you there's a code, there's like a problem. So you need to reset it. Uh, how to reset, you check online. I would like to thank Nadal. Nadal, he gave me, he called me and walked me through it. It's pretty much uh, turning the bike on while this is pressed. And then every time you click, it shows you the next code. If it says ABS, yes, like why? That means there's a problem with the ABS. And then you click on it once, it shows you what code it is. You go run that code on the internet, it tells you what part is, uh, is problematic. And then it tells you, do you want to clear? You press clear, you press click, and it clears it. We went through all the parts that all had to do with me disconnecting all these wires. So that's one thing I wanted to talk about. Second thing is I want to thank Anthony, I don't know your family name. Anthony, you know Anthony with the two STs and the beautiful CVO. He helped me, the guy installed uh, two risers and he walked me through this before I did the actual install. So thank you so much, Anthony, for helping me out. So I have the new, new risers installed. This is my riding position. Natural, it feels neutral, it feels right, not hunched forward. I don't have to compare it to the previous uh, video. I think uh, the previous one was down here. So it feels good, it feels really good. What do you guys say?
So guys, that's about it. The Bunking risers with a six and a half inch rise, two inch pullback. It was pretty much an easy install. The things that were critical to this uh, install were running the wiring, the cables, the cables that came, handlebar cables through, through the back and then fishing them, uh, running them down back to the connectors under, under the tank. Now this setup, only six, six and a half inch work with the standard clutch cable. Otherwise you need an extension for the clutch cable. For the uh, brake line, new brake line, the speedometer and throttle cables. You need to get the kit for that. Anything below six and a half inch, you can actually use the original cabling that came with the bike uh it was a first it was a first for me because i've never done it before i was somewhat hesitant i was scared wasn't sure i was, would be able to do but uh yeah just took me a little bit more time i was careful because i didn't take the front fender i mean i didn't take the front fairing inner and outer out so everything went slow i wrapped it up like a little schmuck but it worked out it worked out that's it so as I've said, I'm going to have links down below by the description where I got the bunking from bunking, but I'll show you. I'll have a little link down there. Also a link to the part number for the Harley part name number. So the upper clamp that you need to use in this uh, installation. That's about it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it uh, interesting and helpful. I'm Sandy watching Holy Shift till the next video, guys. Peace out. Me going to my premiere. <laughs>